Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam and a big warm welcome to the Rough Tools channel. Please hit the subscribe button and click on notifications so you don't miss out on future tips like these. The first tool I have is a basic hacksaw. They're lightweight, the blades are easy to replace and you can also get a junior version which is smaller and take up less space in your toolbox. The disadvantage are is that they don't generally come with blade covers so you need to be careful when you're handling or storing them and it's difficult to get a uniform cut. They're also slow to use. Furthermore, if the cable access isn't great, for example if it's up against the wall, they can be tricky to get the blade into the correct position to be able to cut all the way around. To demonstrate, I have an offcut of armoured cable, a sharp blade, obviously the hacksaw and the gland kit. A quick tip for those that don't know, if you take the shroud and you push it on backwards along the armoured cable, give it a bit of a push, you'll see it expands which gives you the perfect place to cut the back off so that when you put it back on you have a perfect tight fit around the armoured cable. As you all know you then take your gland apart taking the end piece off and you slide it on the cable ready first. One of the other disadvantages of using a hacksaw is that you need to rest the cable on something to be able to cut it. In the real world, once you've decided how long you want your cable to come into your junction box, then you start to cut the cable in the appropriate place. If, for example, you can't turn the cable because it's on a wall or it's already fixed in position because you're renewing the box or something like that, it's sometimes you may find that the saw head hits against the wall, which means you have to take the blade underneath to carry it all the way around. As you can see, it's not the easiest thing to get correct. But we're all trained how to use these in college, so you should all know how to use them anyway. As you see, again, it's not that easy to get a uniform cut. And you do have to be careful of the blade slipping. That's testament to the scars on my thumb. But you get the general idea. Take your blade, cut the outer sheath off. And now you can start to break the armour off. Continue that all the way around. So then, then you can slide the gland on and do it up into position. The second tool I'm going to show you, believe it or not, is a pipe cutter that plumbers use. These are great because they're very versatile because you can put different size cables in because they're adjustable. The blades are very easy to replace and it's deep enough that it will cut through the armour. The blade on this I've had on there for maybe 10 or 12 years since I've owned this. So it's doing really, really well. I've definitely got my money's worth out of this. Brilliantly, they just fit straight over like you would a normal pipe. Get it relatively tight and just spin it around. Every now and again, just give it another quarter turn. Spin it around a bit more. Just keep doing this a few times. As you can see, it's not slipping, my hands are safe and it's very, very quick. Unscrew it, again take your blade to remove the outer sheath. Obviously take it away from your face and your body. And you can see you've got a very perfect uniform cut on the insulation. And the armour just falls straight off without damaging the inner sheath. 
third tool I'm going to show you is the CK Armour Slice. This tool is specifically designed for cutting the armoured cable. Very similar to the pipe cutter, except it's obviously more robust, it's heavier. You can put in very large armoured cable because it's fully adjustable all the way out. But this has the advantage that the jaw is spring loaded. It uses a hacksaw blade and comes with spares and these are readily available should you ever run out and it, it goes on very simply exactly the same as the pipe cutter but with this one once you tightened it up you don't have to tighten it up again because the spring does all the work the only thing to watch of these is to make sure that you follow the correct rotation or as you will strip the teeth off the blade and just again just rotate it maybe 10 or 15 times depending on the thickness of the armoured cable that you're stripping back. And again, you don't have to stop and retighten it like a pipe cutter, because as I said earlier, a moment ago, the spring does all the work for you. Releasing it. And stripping the outer sheath. Again, you can see there's a very uniform cut all the way around the cable and the armour, again, just straight off. No hassle whatsoever. So those are the three tools that I've used in the past and the one that I commonly use today because it's my favourite and I think it's just the easiest one to use myself. What tools do you use? I'm sure there are lots of other different examples out there. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you for watching and until the next time, see you again.